Hey, we're back for another video, and here we have Clavio Abandoned Car and Abandoned Checkout Flows. Everybody knows these flows, but few know how to really optimize it to make sure that you're saving every last cart that you can. And right here is just uh, recent results for a client, 110,000 um, of abandoned cart revenue over a 30-day period, which isn't too bad, not too bad. Um, so yeah, we're going to go over kind of a brief overview of why it's so important, and eventually we're going to get down to some tips, and I'm going to show you some exact flow outlines that you can implement right away to actually generate these types of numbers and try to shoot for that 10% recovery rate. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Again, I've been inside over 50 e-commerce brands, and myself and my agency, WellCopy, we've helped generate over $12 million in revenue. So somewhat know what I'm talking about here. Um, but yeah, first off, why they're so important, anywhere from 56 to 81% of carts are abandoned. Um, that's a lot of revenue being left on the table if you think about it. Um, I mean, it's pretty obvious, but that's a lot of revenue if over half the people adding to their car aren't even buying. Usually the average is around 70%. <clears throat> and considering most brands that I audit, they only recover 2 to 5% of these abandoned carts. So take the 70% average. Um, so 70% of carts are being abandoned, and of the ones abandoned, these brands are usually recovering 2 to 5%. You should be at minimum a 10% recovery rate. Um, and usually you're going to get a lot of that on the first email. So usually, so first email you want to have like 8% um, all the way up to 10%. And um, send them even more emails. Lots of brands only have one abandoned cart, abandoned checkout email. And that's just not going to cut it. Um, things happen. Because you really just have to give these prospects a lot of time. Because they're so close to buying. They were so close. And they're the easiest to sell to because they you are you already got them past the bridge to get them to add to their cart. Um, but a lot of brands just let these customers go without much fight. Gotta have a little bit more fight. Give it some more attention. So why would somebody abandon their cart and check out? They could have seen the shipping information, saw the total price. Um, they just became unsure about your product and think it would solve their problems. They got distracted. Their kids spilled milk all over their computer, Godzilla attacked the neighborhood, and Captain Underpants flew through the sky, caught their attention, anything. One of the big things is just people forget, or sometimes people just need a reminder, because they'll add, a, they'll add to their car and they'll be like, eh, I guess I just don't need this. And so they just need that extra push. And so just one message can get, the done, get it done some of the times, but really you want to be able to overcome these objections and be able to inform them a bit more about the product and get them over that edge. Common mistakes, I've kind of briefly mentioned it. I have an abandoned cart flow already set up. Yeah, maybe you do, but it, but it probably sucks. Um, and so like something like this, like that's just not gonna cut it. This is, it's, it, you're gonna recover so little of your carts and you're leaving so much revenue on the table. And another thing about that is probably I'd say 75% of the brands I audit don't even have an add to cart flow. Now, hold up. You might be thinking that you're like, oh, I do. Really? You have a checkout started. So I point out to that here. It's a major misconception. Klaviyo's abandoned cart flow is actually an abandoned checkout trigger. So if you go to Klaviyo and you just use their base outline for um, abandoned cart, the trigger, if you look at it, you can look at your Klaviyo account right now. If you're an e-com owner, it's probably a checkout started trigger. Whereas that's a checkout abandoned. So rather than somebody clicking to their cart, it's them going a step further and going to like checkout with like pricing information. So most of these brands that I'm auditing, they don't have an abandoned cart flow. They don't have this specific trigger set up. And that's a problem. You want to have both of them because if somebody just like views a product on your page, they click the add to cart button, but like keep shopping, you're missing out on all those people. Um, and so that's a major issue and that can easily be addressed. Uh, you can install the trigger. There's, um, here's this. You can just look up on Klaviyo uh, how to create an added to cart event for Shopify. That's the name of the article. Just do that. It'll give you the whole code. Um, and if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. I've installed this plenty of times for inside Shopify. It's just you have to go into the backend Shopify code and just copy and paste the snippet from them. And then it'll automatically start going to Klaviyo and your add to cart metric will start firing. And you're gonna get a lot more people um, receiving these emails. And again, you're just gonna get um, more conversions out of it. So it's obviously a good thing. So some other common mistakes, um, flows only one to three emails in length and you're not splitting at all based on behavior. Um, that's a major mm -hmm. issue. 
Um, I'm going to go through a few more advanced um, strategies down below. Not customizing due to qualifying for free shipping and other incentives. So a lot of brands, you have like free shipping for orders $60 plus. Let's segment based on that. Say if somebody's cart um, equals to be $80, you want to split that group on and send them a specific email that says it could be the same email as what you currently have, but it says you qualify for free shipping. Just order. You don't have to pay shipping. And then for the people that um, don't qualify for free shipping, you just mention um, uh, pay X amount more money to get free shipping. You're going to see improved conversions across the board. Also, some brands have – maybe you have a freebie. So if you have like an accessory, if you're like a clothing brand, you have a freebie. On orders like $100 plus, you get um, a charger or something like that. Include that. Split those people out. For the people that qualify, just say, hey, finish your order now and you get this for free. And that's a great way to easily improve conversions. Another issue is this call to action is way too low in the emails. I'm going to show some examples below of what that looks like because really right when somebody opens the email, the call to action in their cart should be right in your face to where they don't need to scroll. They could mindlessly be, I don't know, they're waiting for their kid at soccer practice and they just open their phone, their email. They can see right there if they just click an email on accident, you want it to be in their face. They don't have to scroll. You don't have to gather their attention to get them to scroll. It's just right there and they can click one click easy. Another issue, not showing the actual card elements. That grabs someone's attention. If they viewed a product earlier uh, earlier in the day and then they see it in their face in an email, that, that goes a long ways. It grabs their attention because they're like, oh, yeah, I actually did like that, or oh, yeah, I did mean to buy that. Seriously lacking uh, risk reversal and social proof elements. Uh, again, these can just be blocks that you, um, that you use in other emails. You could take blocks from other emails of just like a testimonial and just – copy that from another campaign and put them in some of your abandoned cards. Like, those go a long way. Um, another thing you need to be doing is overcoming objections. A lot of brands are just kind of reminding of the cart, but they're not overcoming these objections that people might be having. Because say somebody's looking for a new phone case and they go to three different websites and each one they added to a cart, one of their cases. And they still don't know what kind of one, what one they want to get. Maybe this one they think it's more protective this one they think is better looking. You want to be able to drill them with the objections that set your brand apart from other brands so that these people who are shopping around, um, looking at different companies in the competitive market, whatever niche you're in, how you stand out and how you um, overcome the objections if they're deciding between. Not willing to add an incentive at the end of your abandoned car flow. Trust me, it's worth it for long run customer LTV. If you're worried about a 5% margin, it's you can look at any big brand. They, 5% margins on one customer doesn't matter because that customer is going to come back and buy, buy, buy back again if your email and SMS systems in the back end are really good. And again, I mentioned this. I just wanted to say it again, not weaving in objection handling, just straight up. Just straight up tell somebody um, the objection that you want to handle. So maybe it's price. Just straight up tell them compared to other, com compared to other people in the niche, our um, product is 20% cheaper. And so that's something that you want to do. And this is typically... The type of um, Clavio outline that I do for clients. So as you can see here, it's anywhere from four to six emails um, in length through the journey. But there's more one, two, three, four, five, six. There's eleven there. Um, but it's split by past customers, not past customers, free shipping and non-shipping. So we have little differences. So this is kind of what you want to do. Six emails right here, and so you have a reminder. Just really simple. Hey, here's your card. Finish it. Two, why you loved it, and you're going to segment based on product category. So this is me segmenting, um, splitting by what kind of product the person added. So if you're clothing, maybe if it's shorts, just have an email be for shorts. Have one be for shirts. And so you can say, um, here's why you loved it. You added this to your cart. Our shirts are breathable, all these things, instead of just having to be broad of here's your cart. Finish your purchase. That, that doesn't speak to someone as much, and it's going to have lower conversions than if you're speaking directly towards what they bought. People notice these things, and they love it. So after the why you loved it, we're going to add some urgency on the cart. Um, so now they've seen it. They know it's there. Now let's add some urgency. Get them scared to say, like, hey, things are, um, things are moving fast. If you want to save your cart, you have to do it now. Four, you want to increase the incentive now. Um, and you want to segment this and only send the increased incentive towards people who haven't bought from you. If somebody's already bought from the brand, they don't need an incentive to get them to buy. So maybe it's just a product thing. So for past buyers, we're just going to skip ahead. For number four, it's just going to be the text basis, everything all good. 
hey, we noticed that you left us in your car. We wanted to make sure everything was okay. It wasn't any technical difficulties. If you have any problems that you want to address with us, please let us know. So that's what that email is. And then these three is we have the increased incentive, reminder of the incentive, kind of last chance. Um, so maybe it's 20% off, something like that, last chance. And then we have the everything all good. So for past buyers, they're getting four emails. And then for uh, non-buyers, people who haven't bought before, they're getting six. And that's the most effective way you're going to do it. Some people like to do it more. This is like what this is what I like to start at, and then I'll add variations from there. And um, yeah, right off the bat, it's the free shipping that you want to segment off. Bare minimum. If you don't want to do all that, uh, you can get this gold star saying I did the bare minimum. Um, you have reminder with suggested products, uh, text-based reminder, flash discount, and then flash discount close. Um, yeah, that's kind of bare minimum. One email, two emails isn't going to cut it. This is this is kind of bare minimum. Again, you'll see I love to use text-based emails um, because they they stand out in the inbox. A lot of people, they don't get personalized messages like text-based emails. And so if you're able to implement that in the right place, they absolutely rip. So, yeah, again, if you want to take your flows to the next level, book a conversa consultation call, and I'll give you some free tips. Um, and now let's get to some great email examples. So here's one. These... Notice the similarities right here. A message up top, the item that was in their cart in the middle, and then a button to order, just right there, just right near the top of the email. Again, I would even say that you could add a call to action like right here and say, complete my order, and you're going to see higher click rates just by doing this. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, this one also by Urban Outfitters, they also have the recommended products. These do very well. Sometimes maybe you don't that's not the thing you originally wanted. But something like this as that first reminder email is going to work pretty solid. And that's kind of the layout that I like to do. Have a thin image. Don't make it a big image saying take another look. Just a thin one so that, again, you don't have to scroll. A thin one that says, hey, you want to complete your order. You show their cart the exact product that they looked at and wanted to make a decision about earlier, and then you have your call to action. That's really all you need for that first email. Um, and again, these are good examples. You can go to reallygoodemails.com, reallygoodemails.com, and there's an abandoned cart uh, section, and it's just a bunch of solid abandoned cart emails that you can use for inspiration. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out. And again, testing is everything, and this is something that you can only do if you have time to do it. Um, so no email is perfect on the first go. Like I said, you want to improve by 1% every single day because you take one test here, here versus here, maybe this one's 1% better, perfect. Try a new test. Maybe this one's 1% better. And get 1%, 1%, 1%. And you want to have at least one test per week um, for your abandoned cart sequence. And let numbers go through to actually uh, see if it's uh, worth it and if the change actually made a difference. Here's some things that you can test. Uh, my favorite is the time between the trigger and then the first email. That's the first thing that I always test. Um, and I usually have multiple tests um, going on at once. Um, but yeah, flow length, incentives, different offers, text-based, like I said, text-based email positioning, design heavy versus basic formatting. These things matter and they're different for each brand. So every single, you just need to test. Every brand is different. Every list is different. So numbers to shoot for, you want at least 60% open rates. Um, abandoned carts are high intent. Um, and if you have a subject line that's intriguing, like you left something behind, those should be getting 60% open rates. 50% uh, 40% at the lowest if you're anywhere under 40% on abandoned cart open rates Let me know because that's probably deliverability issues and you want to get that fixed you want 10% click rates again That's probably a bit high for a lot of brands But if you're getting a 60% open rate, you should be around 10% click rates for your abandoned cart email And you want 5% placed order rates on your emails um, And it should be your abandoned cart and abandoned checkout flows should be the second and third highest revenue flows kind of glossed over it but um, for abandoned cart, I know I talked about the difference between abandoned cart and abandoned checkout. Um, you can pretty much have the same flow for each, the same type of outline, but switch the designs in little places. Again, ideally you have different things, um, but different emails that hit different objections, but you might not have all the time. This is kind of just more of a base overview. But yeah, conclusion, abandonment flows are a big deal considering they're running at all times forever. Your flows are always going and if you set a good one in place, uh, get it locked in and tested and optimized, it can run for years and constantly be bringing in revenue. Should be recovering a minimum of 10% of your abandoned carts, their email. This 
you can simply do that by lengthening your flows. If you're doing 5% and you only have one email, extend it because um, at the end of the day, we're human and people can miss emails from time to time. So by sending more, you just remind them more. Be intentional about the messages you're sending. Don't make it some BS random stuff. Um, and test, test, test. Test, test, test. 95% of e-com brands' abandonment emails are underperforming. And it's free money. It's free money, and it can be fixed, fixed for life by getting a free consultation. Um, you can optimize it. I'll give you some free tips. A lot of times, there are just some levers that you need to switch uh, to make sure it's firing correctly. And I'll help you um, fix those things. So yeah, that kind of does it for this video. Um, again, I'm getting used to YouTube. I ramble a lot. Um, so apologies for that. Thank you for sticking with it the whole time. And again, we guarantee to add 50000 to to 100000 of new monthly revenue in 60 days or you do not pay. Free strategy call. Um, you can just go on ahead and book. The link will be down below. And uh, yeah, let me know if there's anything you guys want me to cover uh, in future videos. I'm happy to, I'm going to keep pumping out new videos, hopefully once every two weeks or so. But yeah, again, thank you so much. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.